that quite frankly have been brilliant. Um, the Golf Life one, where they're at Wentworth, and Gaz, uh, I think he's Gaz Golf or something, Newcastle guy from uh, Geordie Shore. He was at Wentworth as well, BMW. They filmed it, hilarious with all these players. He ends up winning it, and Golf Life with Bullard, they were outstanding as well. And then I watched um, James Wiltshire, I challenged Emma and things got heated. What a player, I tell you. Um, unbelievable golf on that vlog. But the other one I watched, and I'm not really going to cover too much of Liam Harrison's golf mates video, where he discusses how much he earns in a year, because he obviously gets his phone out, clicks a button, and he shows you uh, for a year. Well, it's not actually a year, because that thing um, that he showed you calculates out exactly how much you've earned for 365 days. So he's not hit a year yet, and he's actually earned £125,000. We'll, we'll say that again. £125,000. Now... He didn't make it clear which channel that was for, so he made the assumption, or we made the assumption, that that's his golf mate's main channel. He's got another two channels, I believe. But let's just look at this. He's got 200,000 subscribers, and this got me thinking. So just for the, um, this current period he's made £125,000 and he went in to explain how that sounds like a lot of money <laughs> most folk are only on 30 grand a year like I mean that's a lot of money but he, he, you know he went into why he's got to pay he pays for everything like flights uh, all these uh, guys he gets on the channel he's got to pay for their costs uh, he loses money left right and centre when he's um paying for cameramen, etc, etc. You get the general gist. It's still a lot of money, though. But what got me thinking, and what has probably got you thinking along the same lines, is you see a lot of these other channels, right, with, like, ten times the amount of subscribers that Liam has in the Golf Mates. Think about how much money they're raking in. Take that 125,000, times it by about ten... And that's what they're raking in, which is quite incredible for basically producing videos and sticking them up on YouTube. But what's more interesting than that, and, and, and the main uh, purpose of this, is to have a look at how things can go awry for certain YouTubers. Mark Crossfield, Coach Lockie, um, the other cohorts that were all on that channel. The... The reason for them becoming, and there's a, there's a phrase in economics, it's called economically non-viable. Now, if you have a look back at Mark Crossfield's uh, rise and slight fall, he's still earning about 125000 right? If you go by the stats Liam showed you, currently uh, Mark Crossfield is probably getting round about that figure. Um, and, and why is that relevant? Well, all this rubbish about them all falling out, splitting up and things like that. Not economically viable. If there was four of them on the channel and they were all sharing the revenue four ways, you can see where 125,000 sounds like a lot, but once you start um, sharing that four ways, that's why Mark Crossfield went his separate way and Coach Lockie went his separate way and Dan... Da dun dun went a separate way. They realised that, yeah, they work great together, their content's fantastic, but they just weren't um, earning enough of a living. Because obviously, they've all got big houses, they've all got Teslas, they've all got fancy cars, and quite frankly, they, they are wanting more than 30 grand a year, like you and me are struggling to get um, going to work every day, and they're worried about a couple of hundred thousand a year, you know. But it shows you that. The bigger channels, like Pete Finch uh, and uh, Rick Shields and that, and Good Good stuff, the amount of money that they generate is quite unbelievable amounts of money. And uh, they'll have you believe that, you know... Uh, but to be fair, 
you and me aren't paying anything for it. It's all ad generated, isn't it? Through view, views, but it's still incredible the amount of money. And I don't know if Lee Harrison did the right thing by actually producing that fact that even on his limited views, because his view count's way down, if you look at uh, Lee Harrison's view count, that's how we can roughly assume that Mark Crossfield is on about the same. Because he his view count's very similar. And obviously, when I edit this together, I'll put screenshots in and stuff all the way through this video. But I don't know how Top Bloke's been... Top Bloke must have been sleeping the last week and a half and missed all this. Because he's never put anything out about it. So I just thought I'd chat about it on a kind of general sort of thing. Uh, and just say that I just find the whole like money aspect quite obscene, actually. Because most people are really struggling like, you know, struggling to pay the bills, struggling to put the heating on, struggling to film and put food on the table, struggling to fill their car up. £1.56.7 a litre, the now. Um, in general, folk are struggling, and uh, clearly, these YouTubers are definitely not struggling. Um, I know, it's entertainment, and it, it does take you somewhere for free, that gives you some uh, good entertainment, doesn't it? So we're all getting something out of it, but my goodness. Anyway, that's the video. Um, as you know, this channel is all for charity. Mac Millen, Help the Heroes, Shelter UK. I don't think we'll ever get uh, like monetized to the extent that like Liam Harrison and people like that are, you know? But it'd be great if we could, because that'd be a fantastic amount of money to give to the charities. Um, I remember reading somewhere that James Robertson apparently said that his first ever uh, monetized uh, check was two pounds fifty. <laughs> two pounds fifty he got. So, well, we'll wait and see. I mean, you know, it all counts or something, doesn't it? But let's not try and uh, make a living out of this. We're certainly not trying to do that. We're just trying to get money to charity. But just beggars belief this. Um, amounts, you know, the amounts that these other channels are getting. And why, you know, all these reasons that came out about Mark Crossfield and Saturday Night Singing and all the, the clear thing was, it was not economically viable anymore, splitting it four ways. Why didn't they just come out and say that? You know, it's like why the um, guys from Good Good are splitting up. They're making huge amounts, but when you split it down to like uh, six ways and all that, it's still a huge amount of money, but they all feel that if they go out on their own, they can make more money. Why do they not just be honest and come out with that? It's like it's all, you know, hidden behind the curtain type thing, eh? But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, you know, we've touched on a few things. We've put slides in, and I just find it, the whole thing quite bizarrely interesting from a point of view of, like, you know how, like, we'll leave it there because I'm quite sure Top Bloke's going to expose it further. Thanks for watching.